Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Design Recharge. I'm your host, Diane Gibbs, and I'm here with my friend, Andrew Burnett. And I'm really excited because he says Wednesday a special way because he's from Scotland and they say it different there. And I love the way he says it. So tell him how you say Wednesday. 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 I love it. Okay. I know that's silly. And today is St. Patrick's Day for everybody that's celebrating. Amy Lyons is here from Raleigh. And I appreciate uh, Chris is here from Cape Cod, Massachusetts. We have Annette from California. Brian Jan from Virginia. D and John Ingalls from Peoria, Illinois. Demi's coming all the way from Athens, Greece. My mom's in Athens, Georgia. Quite different. Uh, Jacob is popping in from Slovakia. And Mohammed, tell us where you're popping in from. Paul is taking up the middle of the country that's north. He's uh, representing the most most northern person maybe right now, which is in Minnesota in Minneapolis. And um, Andrew is in Scotland. And Andrew is going to talk to us about naming. But first, he's going to tell us about beer o'clock on Friday. Tell him about uh, what you so, do on Fridays. So beer o'clock. Um, there, was, there was quite a discussion um on Instagram, actually, with uh, with Mario and and yourself, Ben, about about when to use "ew" because of because of "hello," and um, it's just the "o" sound. So "lol" doesn't become "lul" because it's not "lol." So, um, so anyway, so on 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 a Friday, um, on a Friday afternoon at five p.m. UK time. Uh, I do a thing called Beer O'Clock, where basically I open a beer and I talk about three things. Uh, so what was, what is, and what will be. And I've, 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 somehow I've been doing it for about a year now, um, and it's, it's, it's total amateur hour, as anyone who's ever seen it will, will attest to. Um, and... Yeah, and sometimes there's a guy, there's the worst busker uh, ever. Who uh, worst who, what? Busker, like a like a street musician. Oh, yeah. So there's there's a guy who's seventy years old, stands outside with a guitar, who has the enthusiasm, or just just unparalleled enthusiasm. But his enthusiasm, as as high as his enthusiasm is, is his talent low. So. He's yeah. He's just he's just blessed with m- endless amounts of enthusiasm, but not blessed with talent whatsoever. So he's entirely untroubled by talent. Is kind of how how I've um, described him in the past. But he's a lovely, lovely guy. Um, and I, because I, I one day I just I had to speak to him actually with the intent of asking him to maybe not stand there anymore. <laughs> um, and and he's such a lovely guy that, that I couldn't bring myself to do it. So um, so now, despite the fact that it sounds really bad, um, it's something that other people are now aware of. So he's he's got a greater audience than he ever would have had from just standing outside outside my place. I love that. Okay. Well, so Andrew. Tell them a little, and Pridge is here outside of Portland. She's in Vancouver, Washington. It's good to have you. And Amini, I'm, am, am, uh, Muhammad, am, I don't know how to say your first name. So tell, but he's in North Africa. So it's really great to see, to awesome. see you guys. Okay. So um, Andrew, do you want to tell them you are, you're in Scotland. We met through the future pro group and we became fast friends and we've been friends for maybe almost three years. And yeah. so yeah, anyway, coming up for that. I want you to tell them a little bit of your background um, of uh, in our industry and how you've done brand strategy, but also the thing that you've now just, now you realize you're just a um, amazing at is, is also naming and helping people understand their name. And actually you've helped John and D um, they hired you to work on their rename and it's huge. I know you're going to talk about it, but can you give them a little bit of your background? I think one thing that I'll just say straight out is that I, uh, I have a, a have or am a form of autistic or have autism, whatever. Um, so so yeah, so sometimes I go screaming off on tangents, and sometimes they can be entertaining, but then other times, other times, 
you, I just lose the thread, right? And then it makes it more difficult for people to to follow. Not and, me. Uh, not, I guess because I have ADHD. There you go. It's, we it's, just sync up. It's a match made in heaven, right? So, um, and, but I have actually, I've actually um, trademarked the, the the phrase short and simple, which is over here. Oh, so it's a big stretch now. Um, this this is actually a wall, as I was telling Diane before. It doesn't look like it, but it, it, it's actually so. Um, they're tangents, you see. So what I've actually done is I'm limiting myself time-wise to, to the answers, right? So if it if I actually get to the bit, then there's a noise. I'm sorry, I'll switch it off immediately. But, um, right, so, yeah, I have for 20-something uh, years worked with loads of different brands, uh, from solopreneurs up to, up to nation states. Um, and it's probably about similar to the time that I met Diane, that I realized that what I do has always had this kind of red thread that kind of goes, goes through it. Um, and that that is ultimately it's, it's, it's brand strategy, right? So um, in my everyday experience of the world, I see stuff that most people don't see. And, and I experience a lot more inputs and stimuli than most people experience. And that's down to this, this autism. Uh, so, so I filter out loads of rubbish. Hi, Diane's mum. That, that would have been a different word. But um, so I filter out loads and loads and loads of rubbish uh, to come to a simple or a simpler thing in order just to deal with my surroundings in life, basically. Um, and yeah, so that's that's kind of how, how my head works. Anyway, I'm going to pause this because otherwise it will go off and I've gone over the two minutes and I'm just going to I told you you didn't it. have to do the two I'm minute thing. Just going to accept it. Um, so um, yeah, and, and over the, over that time, I've I've named numerous things and and it's the kind of thing, you know, when people keep asking you to do the same thing, then at some point you realize maybe maybe they're asking me because they value my opinion on this thing, right? And maybe that's maybe that's why people are asking me these things. Um, and and names has has been one of those things. And I really really enjoy the process of doing it. Um, and I've created my own process for doing it. I've created my own framework ultimately so that I can get or try to get what happens inside my head out into a format that other people can can also use, right? So that's, um, yeah, I think, I hope. So you've also taught, it. you've taught at um, uh, the University of Dundee, which is yes. in Northern Scotland. You teach, you do a lot of things with marketing. You have, for many, many years, you were um, ranked number one in Scotland for social media or digital marketing or, I don't even remember. Uh, what social it was. Social Media Scotland. I, I was my my personal website. In fact, actually, people that are that are watching just now can can check that um, on on Google. If you just if you just Google Social Media Scotland, I'm um, I should be I should be either number one or number two. Yeah, and I, so I, I for AndrewBurnett.com. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. That's sorry. That's my that's my personal that's my personal website. So, so even I'm Scotland, so he's not, he is, this is why we are two of the same people. We, <laughs> he's not good at um, telling all, tooting his own horn, which of course I love about Andrew, but he got to brand the, I was about to say the university, not the university, even bigger than the university. He got to mm. brand the country Scotland and he did, he worked with the tourism board, I think, right? You want to tell him so I don't butcher it? Yeah. So, well, I mean, we worked with, numerous different kind of stakeholders across um, across loads of different sectors so um, the obvious ones kind of kind of tourism but it was it was across um, they, had, they identified these different pillars of, of stakeholders so there was um, live and work uh, there was study there was visit and there was business so 
basically um, there, there were people who were investing or setting up businesses here. There were people who were looking to, to live here or to, or to relocate here. People that come here to study. We've got some exceptional universities in, in, in Scotland. Um, as well as, you know, people who want to come and see the Harry Potter viaduct or see the castles or see where Outlander... No, Outlander was actually not filmed here, I don't think. I think it's filmed in... Anyway, just to see the country and to look for the mythical creature in, in the loch and um, all of these things. Exactly, Loch Ness, precisely. That's Demi, right, yeah. Demi. Yeah, so feel free, feel free to come and have a look. But, you know, I... I put my hand in the fire and tell you that you're not ever going to find it. But um, but feel free to come and, you know, have a look for it. So. And you are in Edinburgh, but you yes. didn't grow up there. You grew up in... Um... In darkest Aberdeenshire, as, uh, as as anyone from the UK would appreciate what, what that sort of means. Um, it's a very rural, uh, almost parochial kind of place. Um the like the city of Aberdeen itself is is kind of quite affluent. It's um, that's the the European oil capital, so it's kind of got a lot of cosmopolitan people and and stuff like that. But as soon as you go into, into the countryside, it's it's all farmers basically. Um, it's beautiful. And We've he taken me lovely, on a yeah. tour with Google Earth. So, hmm. so, but, and this is why we always are on the phone for a long time because we <laughs> both uh, enjoy just learning. And, um, but there's all these things that Andrew is doing. And that's not beer today. It's just peppermint tea, just so you guys know. But if in it a was tea, style, I don't recommend putting a tea bag into, <laughs> into, into beer. It's probably it's wouldn't not, be so it's, good. It's, it's not great. It's not great. I know that you have something to teach us, but um, I want to ask you this question first. So what kinds of problems in regards to naming, what kind of problems have you seen arise when people don't know how to properly choose a name? And what are some of the things that you you see happening in the industry, but then you also see as, wow, if they had just done blank, you know, or, oh, that's yeah. a terrible name. Can you give us well, a couple? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's, it's funny you should say that because I've put them into in kind of a presentation. Um, so maybe if I start. Yeah, you want to teach. If yeah, yeah if, that's, if that's cool. That's awesome. Um, what I'll also just say straight off is that um, I, this, this, is, this is such a plug, right? So um, not, that I'm, not that I'm in any way kind of um, incentivized to plug this, but, um, but if you don't have it or if you don't know about it yet, you should definitely check out this app called mm -hmm. um, apart from apart from apart from just having quite a cool name mm -hmm, uh, it's um, it's just it's just a lot of fun so that's what how I've do you used spell for. it so is it M it's M M H M M and it's mm -hmm dot app so actually I mean it's, it's quite a playful name but it goes against the framework that i put together for naming so okay but it's <laughs> um, a cool tool so yeah it's I, I i think i think it's super cool right so basically it turns up as an additional um camera so on zoom that's now the mm -hmm app is now my camera and all the slides and everything is directly inside Mm hmm And you can do things like, let me see. Uh, commit well, your hands on your chest fit. now. <laughs> All right. Oh, is that? Yeah, oh, is that that's see. the pointer hand, is it? Yeah, that's the pointer hand. That ah, is so funny. Okay. But you see, you can. Yeah, you can fade like away. Ghostly and stuff. And it's like your you Obi-Wan Kenobi. You can fly around the room and you can do all sorts of all sorts of daft stuff, right? So anyway, um, yeah, so sometimes things go wrong, right? So you can even drop in, you can even drop in like your, your reanimated gifts and stuff. Um, so yeah, so sometimes things like really, really go wrong with naming. And um, I have, uh, I've got a couple of examples of, of that. So this is the story of Pout, a.k.a. 
the cautionary tale of always dressed well. And um, to, to protect the unfortunate, I've, um, I've changed the names. Also to protect myself from you know, potentially people being angry with me. Um, so Pout was, uh, there was a client of mine who was looking to launch um, a magazine and um, they were uh, they were trying to, or they were they wanted to to use the name Pout, right? So uh, Pout is clearly four letters long. Uh, the domain name Pout.com is obviously not available. The social media handles at Pout also not available. So in a case like that, you you can approach the people who own it. And that's that's kind of what we did on their behalf. So um, for things like that, I use specialist domain brokers who, who can who can facilitate that and sometimes open up deals that you just wouldn't get otherwise. Um, so so we, if somebody we, needs to do that, they could do that through you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people that um, probably even know there were domain brokers, but that's what yeah, I love. I mean, there are people who, yeah, there are people that that's all they do, right? They just buy and sell domains, right? Um, but it's not only the domain. That's the thing. So, so sometimes, some sometimes these domain brokers as well, they they sometimes don't even realize the value of what it is that they do because because it's not only the domain. It's essentially it's the digital brand, right? So it's. Um, it's the it's the domain, it's the social media handles, it's 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 beyond just the domain name, right? It's it's the name in, in its entirety. And, and and um so yeah, so so they they went to do that, right? And this broker he managed to he managed to get like a, a properly good deal. So I mean that's a four-letter dictionary word, right? And it was going to be it was a little bit south of fifty thousand pounds sterling, which I think is about sixty thousand, seventy thousand US just now, roughly, some something like that. Um, in any case, the client felt that was a lot of money, which which it is. Um, so. One Monday morning, I got a phone call and they said, we've decided we're not going to go with pout, but we're going to use always dressed well dot com as the, as the uh-huh. domain name. And I thought, well, that's a shame because, you know, pout's a brand, always dressed or is brandable, rather. You could, you could build a brand from that name. Um, always dressed well, not so much, right? <laughs> um, and unfortunately, always dressed well is 17 letters long, which is exactly two characters more than the maximum length that Twitter will allow. So, so they had to make a different social media handle um, than, their, than their domain name. Right, so they then also didn't have consistency in the name, and they uh, they spent s- serious money. So um, they saved forty thousand and some some pounds on not buying Pout dot com with all the associated social media handles. Um, so they saved that money there, but then they spent the best part of a million pounds on billboard ads um, to try and promote this, this brand. And it was a, it was an online only brand as well. So, so the brand didn't exist offline. It didn't have any, any products that were available on, on the shelf or anything. You would only ever access this digitally in the form of pixels. How does that make a difference for somebody? Because you want the digital product to be easier would you want a digital product to be easier than a real? No, not necessarily, but it does make a difference where um, for for the next part of of this, right? So they they um, they had they spent all of this money, like you know, high six figures on on billboards, but the place where the billboards were at the time 
you had no mobile phone, as, as we would say, or, or cell phone reception there, and there was no Wi-Fi. So there was no connectivity, right? So, so you're faced with a 17-letter domain name with .com on the end. So ultimately, like 20 letters plus the dot, 21 characters, right, that you somehow had to remember for long enough to then want to put it into your device after you were in a place where you then had reception or, um, or, or Wi-Fi, right? So, so that's why it's important. If it was breakfast cereals, then you would have it on, on these billboards and then you would see it in the supermarket, right? So you would have that kind of that, that effect, Right. But you would be reminded to, regularly of it, but now you're not having any precisely. other reminder. Precisely. Okay. Right. The only other reminder you're going to have of it is is ultimately in in paid impressions that are, you're going to be getting. Right. And and at at the time we also helped them with paid impressions. Right. And you know, so we aren't on on that too, which was lucrative. Um, but but the name, unfortunately. Just it just didn't work. So so with saving the money that they saved ultimately on on the name, um, paid for less than less than a day of these billboards, right? So that was yeah. So so that was that was that. And after after eighteen months, the company folded. That brand or not the company, but that brand was folded. And uh, they had spent, you know, sort of like seven figures on trying to make it work. So the name, but the name didn't, it's not to say it would definitely have worked if they had had pout, but it would have been a lot more likely to work if they'd had pout than always dressed well. So Demi has a question. How can people so out of touch with reality have six figures to move around it for promotions? But but here's the thing. They didn't choose the right place, which is, again, something that you would help them do online as well as even in a physical space. But it's it's thinking about those things. It that's user experience. That's UX design right there. Right. That's is is somebody's phone going to be able to reach when they see that billboard, you shouldn't put that billboard there, right? Because it's not memorable enough. Pout might be memorable enough, but you're also going down the interstate or, or it's a road. And what kind of, you know, you're not maybe, you need the reminders. You probably wouldn't have uh, told them to do put their money in a billboard anyway. Not, not in a month of Sundays, no. And certainly not in, certainly not in that place. And, and Demi, Brilliant question to which I've got no answer, right? Because I wish I knew. I, I genuinely wish I knew because you know, with with that sort of budget, the what what could ultimately have been achieved would have been, you know, would have been fantastic. And and the name pout that clearly I've changed, you know, to protect myself and and the unfortunate ex client um, that sold like years later to somebody completely different for about one and a half times as much as they had it on the table for, right? So so short dot com names, they only ever go north in value. Clearly, I'm also just, you know, the disclaimer, uh, this is not financial advice. And if you buy a domain name, it's your own fault. But... Um, but yeah, I've I've yet to see an example of someone who's paid a lot for for a domain name and it's then been worth less after they've after they've bought it. So um, well, remind me to tell you a good use of billboards later. Okay, mm. keep going. Great. So that so that's that's kind of like the, that's the big money example, right? And that's a really obvious one that you you know if you've got all that money, hire the specialist. Um, hire the specialist, listen to what the specialist is saying, take advice, do it properly. And, you know, with, with that kind of money, there's, there shouldn't be an excuse for, for that to happen, right? Um, and then this, this is like, this is on the other kind of end of the scale. So 
This is now the story of the design agency and the armed robber. And again, I have changed the names to protect the unfortunate, right? So two people whose surnames were Connor and Jackson decide to set up a design agency. And they use, uh, they decide that they're going to use their surnames um, to, to use as, as their brand name, right? So they call themselves Jackson Connor and think this is, this is great. Uh, the domain name is available. All the social media handles are available. That's all great. Like dot com was available or like dot Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not I'm not sure with the altered name now if that, if that right, is right, the right, case right. or not. But but the the real events that that this dramatized version uh, <laughs> or, or fictionalized version refers to, it was. Um and uh, and also you know like for, for like ten bucks, right? You know, for because it had never been registered before. However, anybody who now Googled Jack, which way around did I say? You Jackson said Jackson Connor. Connor. Yeah, yeah, right. So anyone, so now anyone who Googled Jackson Connor was met by pages and pages and pages of uh, basically of a crime report about a guy called Jackson Connor who um, who had done an armed robbery. And I think it was like in a post office or a, like a, we would call it a petrol station or a gas station in the States, right? But he'd done, um, yeah, he'd done an armed robbery. Right? So now your, your brand name is the same as an armed robber, um, which isn't, it doesn't have the same death knell that, you know, that having a name that's too long is and putting all your money into billboards and it, it doesn't have that. It doesn't have that kind of final sentence, if you like, on on your brand um, that Pout did. But what it does have is it's just got this confused thing, right? And it's kind of people people have then got that thing to reference. So again, why do that, right? You know, why do it? And and the thing that that opens up is also a little bit kind of beyond that is when people this happens a lot. Clearly, I'm not someone who's bothered by fashion in the slightest, but this happens a lot in the worlds of in the world of fashion is that people um, name their their brand after themselves, right? So there's a lady uh, called Donna Karan, I think I'm probably butchering her, her surname. We just name. say Karen, Donna Karen, but right, Donna Karen. Um, so, but she. She's no longer allowed to use her own name within her own industry because she sold that name when she sold her company. That's that's crazy, right? You know, it's your your name's the one thing that your parents give you when you're born, and it's the one thing that you've got when you die. It's the only thing that's you know, it's the only thing you can take with you. It's your name, right? So, um, so why would yeah? Don't don't use your name, you know, preferably. Um, so yeah, anyway, that was, that was that. Also don't use the name of a, of an armed robber when you're just setting up in business. <laughs> do your research, right? So do your, do research, your research before yeah. and, and just choosing a name that you like is also not important. So we talked, I, we get mm. this a lot, I think with, in branding, um, we have, uh, we, oh, well, our client doesn't like this color. Well, it's not important if they like the color or not. It's if their customers like the color. It's for you, it's the same thing with naming. It's not important if the person likes it so much, if it still can suit the purpose, but it also is really important that it's memorable, that it's easy, right? Short and yeah. simple. That's yeah. huge. So exactly, exactly. So I mean, I've got, I think, I think, I think maybe we, we, we come on to that in a bit about the, the liking thing, but um because I've I've got a bit of a rant on that as well. You you may need to you may need to kind of rein me in again, or or I'll set the timer for for that. I'll definitely set the timer for that one. So so yeah, so don't don't do kind of you know that either. But probably it's not so much about knowing what not to do, but like you know, let's talk about something positive instead. Because hacking on other people's stuff's easy to do, right? So um, 
So John and Dee, uh, who, are, who are both in the audience, I believe, um, they were rebranding their merch brand and approached Hello for assistance. Uh, so as with all naming projects, uh, we used our scummy framework, which I'll expand on in a little bit. Um, Dee and John were keen to have a name that worked and they were prepared to put the work in to get one. So that, <laughs> that pretty much describes my ideal client, right? So um, they value what it is and they're prepared to, you know, to, to graft, to, to get to, to, get to a, a result, right? How do you vet them to ask if they are prepared to do the work? Do you know you that? That kind of comes have... out. That, no, Just I mean, that kind of comes out. In, yeah, I mean, you know, You'll, you will get people who's, oh, I'm just going to call it this or whatever. Well, that's, that's okay. That's fine. You know, then, then you don't value it. That's, that's, but, and I say that not, it maybe sounds like I'm judgmental about it, but I don't mean it like that. You know, it's kind of, if, if, if it's not something that you value, then that's okay. You know, like some people value. Billboards know, in the middle people, of nowhere. Exactly. Right. Yep. You know, or, or, or putting QR codes onto air uh, in-flight magazines before there's Wi-Fi on the plane. Right. So, you know, it's the same thing, right? It's, it's senseless. Right? right. But in any case, um, that's, that's uh, we've, we've done the bitching bit. Now we're talking about the positive thing. Right? right. So in this photo here, which, uh, which is clearly, not staged whatsoever. Uh, you can see Dee and John carefully studying the brand naming kit, which guides the entire process, right? Uh, so they spent a lot of time and effort developing ideas, con um, combining different words together, researching the, the meanings of other words, considering their brand and playing with concepts before landing up with wild rooted or wild routed for, for some people, perhaps. Um, I'll come back to that bit as well, like rooted versus routed uh, in, in a bit, probably remind me about if, if it doesn't okay. come up in your questions after. Um, so you can get a real feel for the brand from, from their lovely work. Uh, on the identity and the branded products in these in these pics that, that you can see. And for the benefit of anyone who's only listening to this, check it out for yourselves anywhere that you can type wild rooted into your device, right? So on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, on .com, right? Type it in and, 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 and you'll get it, right? Um, so that's that's like that's the case study of uh, how it does work. Um, and in that, I mentioned, and I'll need to kind of like this is right. This is this is because this is because of me basically doing knocking this up in Illustrator and you know and not thinking that I will then be stood behind it. Um, but in any case, yeah, our our framework for for naming brands is. Scummy. So I believe that great brand names are scummy. And scummy is that they're short, right? The, the shorter, the better. I've already said that 15 characters is the maximum for, for Twitter. Um, but how many brands, like great brands, can you think of that have got 15 characters in their name. Like, you know, really. Not nah, very many. Me neither. Me neither, right? So, so yeah, keep, keep it short. Keep it short. The other thing is that the shorter it is, the less impressions that you'll require before it ingrains itself on your audience's consciousness, right? Before it's kind of something that, that's seeped into them, that's osmosed into their, into their awareness, right? So, You'll actually save money by having a, a short name, or you could just buy, you know, a seventeen-letter.com from GoDaddy, and you know, and 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 waste a million pounds on trying to get people to remember it. Um, it should be consistent. So you absolutely do need the .com 
right? And I know other people say, oh, you can get one of 1,500 different Dot ninja, dot whatever, right? Dot ninja, dot um, dot X, Y, Z, dot, you know, dot what, like literally these things exist, right? If you don't own the dot com, somebody else does, right? And that's that's an issue because when, when somebody else owns the dot com, then you don't and they can appear in your search results, Right, much easier than you can in theirs, and especially if they're in the same space as you. Why? Why? You know, why do that to yourself? Right? That name doesn't work. Right? And it doesn't matter about. Well, we'll I'll come back to that later. I think when when Diane's asking questions, she always grills me on why. Why is it important or not important to like it about working? So, um, it needs to be consistent because you want to have the same name everywhere. And again, that is so that you require less impressions to make it into your audience's consciousness. That's it. That's all, right? But if it's consistent, you do that because it's on Twitter, it's on Facebook, it's on Instagram, it's everywhere that these people look, that your that your customers look, they see your name, they say your name, it gets that repetition and it just works. It should be unique because if it's really, really similar to somebody else's name, then then you're going to have problems, right? So um, if Pout, for example, uh, had had um, a competitor called Pouts, then Pout wouldn't have been a good word, right? Or a good or a good brand to have. Right or 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 vice versa for for that matter. Right, so you really want to have something that's that's unique. Again, it comes back to getting into your audience's heads, getting into their consciousness. Right, uh, it should be memorable. Again, it's the same thing. Right, it's about them remembering you. So if I mention to you about the about the the shoes or the or the or the leisure wear that's kind of got that that swoosh, right? You've all got the same name going through your heads just now, right? And that's because you've remembered that name, right? It's 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 in your it's in your consciousness, right? That's that's what it is. If I were to say the same about the about the three stripes, most of us are going to have that name. But some of us might not. It's not quite the same kind of ubiquitous level that it, that it's at. But but it's there, right? So it should be memorable. And then it should also should also have meaning. Now, um, the meaning doesn't need to be massively complicated, right? So, hello is how myself and three of my idiot friends used to speak to each other in the early 90s in, uh, in, in a flat or apartment that we shared in Aberdeen, right? And uh, any word that had an O sound in it, we made it into an ill sound and it sounded ridiculous. And, and, but it works, uh, rather it works, with, it works with all of these, right? And that's the meaning behind it. So there's, there's something to tell people because if there's nothing to tell people, that's awkward, right? That's the equivalent of, uh, of a couple who met on, on Tinder and don't want to tell anyone it was Tinder and then get their story wrong when somebody asks them. It's that level of awkwardness. It's, oh, I just take it because I like the name, right? You know, ugh, just, it, it doesn't need to be crazy, meaningful but it does it needs that you need to be able to tell people why you've got that name right basically because somebody at some point will ask and it's better that you've got something to tell them than you have to make something up so meaningful and then finally because i couldn't just have scum uh it has to be your brand appropriate now that's in many ways that's the least important thing Right. So um, if your brand is if your brand is kind of particularly cheeky, you don't want to have something that's like too serious. Um, but equally, you know, 
So like Hileo is kind of quite a light-hearted brand name, but but like we've done work for for a nation, right? So it doesn't it doesn't hold you back in in that sense either. And I really I really need to get a much much better analogy for this. But the analogy that I use is if you were a cigarette brand, you probably wouldn't be allowed to use the word healthy in your brand name anywhere on the planet. And, and quite rightly so, right? Says, you know, an ex-smoker who, who, <laughs> who smoked for 25 years. Idiot that I am. Um, but in any case, um, yeah, you, you know, it needs to be appropriate to what it is that, that you do or rather what, what you don't do. All right. So um, Pritch had a question. I'm going to go back to it. She said, um, how do you, um, and I'm doing this. So how do we let our clients know their intervention or their intention when like the pout was going for, hey, we're going to um, do it, you know, instead of spending 40K on the name, we're going to just choose our own thing. Um, how do we let our clients know that this inter intervention often keeps us or them from those best results? And she said, maybe it's not a question, but I think it is a good question. So what do you do mm. in those situations? At that point, once it gets to that point, you've probably only got like two choices. And that is either to, either to upset your client or to be upset yourself. That, that's really it. Because you, if the client decides that's what they want to do, they don't value the name, right? So, so if somebody doesn't value it, there's no point in, in, you know, in trying to stage an intervention with them because the only people really who, who, who would be able to stage an intervention with somebody like that, it's never going to be the expert, right? So it's never going to be, um, <laughs> with the example, this is, this is why I should have a different analogy because I am the, the stereotypical ex-smoker, right? So um, um, it's never going to be the doctor who, who convinces you to stop smoking, despite that they're the one that says to you, you really shouldn't do that. And, uh, all you do is you come away from the doctor's office feeling angry with the doctor, right? And it's up to you if you want to put yourself into that position as, you know, as, as a brand strategist. I, I don't, right? So I mean, as it, as it you happens, give them, you give them your advice and you tell them why, yeah, and you yeah. maybe give them some examples of how this has gone wrong in the past, yeah. but it is essentially, it's up to them. And I think that we deal with that a lot about value, the valuing, uh, someone valuing us and what we have to say, uh, mm. or about what the decisions are, but then essentially it is their decision, well, right? It's entirely their decision. So, I mean, you know, well, I got, I got paid to offer them advice on that. Um, I I would have been paid by the broker. I would have got a commission as well. Um, so, you know, from a financial sense, I, I missed out on, on a bit of a commission. Um, as it happened, then because, because naming isn't kind of like the only thing that I was doing. In fact, it was, it was peripheral to, to everything that we were doing there. Um, I, I ended up with a sizable payday from that client because they used a rubbish name, right? So because they used a rubbish name, they had to spend a lot of money getting impressions of that name for other people. And they did that through, through my company. So, um, so as much as it's something that I'm really passionate about and that I would like people to have names that, that work, mm. at the same time, sometimes it's not a reflection on me personally, ultimately, if they choose to take my advice or not. I think that's kind of the only way to, to see it. You need to separate um, your own value from somebody taking your idea or not taking your idea and mm -hmm. try and get paid for, for the idea. Right. But right. if they but if they don't want to do it, that's entirely fine. So what about what about them yeah. liking it? What if they said, Well, I really want to like the name? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure what D and John said, or if they were like, you know, they were going through a bunch of names, I know. Um, but how important is it for us to like that name? It's 
not important whatsoever. Um, I would say don't don't use a name that you hate, right? Don't do that because you know that's just torturing yourself, and you, and you needn't, right? Um, but it's really it's just it's not important, and and that is the single most difficult part of speaking to clients um, and to convince them of the fact that it doesn't matter whether or not they like it. And, and I use the story of, um, of a guy called Ron Knight, who you may know, you, you may not, you, you'll know him after this. Um, I, I think, I think that's his name. I hope. Um, he, he had a company in the fifties or sixties, roughly, uh, in in the states, and he sold sports shoes, um, pretty much out of out of his car, and the company was called something like something like Blue Diamond Sportswear, something something like that, like really memorable. I mean, it was before Twitter, so it didn't matter, right? It didn't matter that it was more than fifteen characters. But um, Ryan said it was called British Knights. Or was it uh, British Knights? I don't know. He just. No, uh, I don't. I think. I think. I think that's. I think that is that not the people who then became BK. BK oh, Knights. Different company, he says. Okay. Yep. You're yeah, right. I think. Okay. I think. Right. Um. So. So in any case, his business partner kind of said, "Well, look, you know, we really we need a different name, right?" And one of them came up with a four-letter name, right? That was Nike or Nike. Um. And and Ron Knight didn't like the name, right? If you ask him, I think he's still alive. If you ask him today whether or not he likes the name, it 100% guaranteed he loves that name, right? Because it's made billions for him, but, but, but billions, not millions, but billions, right? So... So if you take, think of a number between one and 10, doesn't matter, right? And then put nine zeros on the end of it. That's the money that he's got in his wallet. Largely because people can remember the name, they can tell other people about the name, and right? The, the whatever the, the, um, the, the diamond, I think it was blue diamond. It was, I'll, I'll find out. Um, the, yeah, the, that company, just it, it wouldn't have done that, right? Just could not have done that. So Paul says, well, I disagree, at least as a small solopreneur, which is kind of like Ron Knight, right? Um, kind of business. Since the owner is the number one brand ambassador, you do need to like your name. And I do think that there are plenty of times that you can um, like the name and have it short and simple so that mm. it works, right? But like in this case, he didn't like the name. Yeah. And because you want to be proud to share it. So I think that that's where um, it can't be something that you're um, ashamed of, right? You don't want to choose no. a name that you hate. No, exactly. Right? Never, never. Like, that's that's why I say, you know, don't do not do something that you hate, right? But, but you don't, you genuinely don't need to like it. But, but in saying that, by the time that you get to a name that you're going to put on your product, on your service, on your business cards, on your website, on your everything, and um, by the time you get to that point with a name that you have that you know works, you you will like it. But you can't start the process. You can't start shortlisting according to whether or not you you like it. Right. So. Nike is, a, is, a, is an extreme example, but if it's something that I, I use like a lot of kind of relationship um, analogies, right? So you're, you're doing this, you, you'll, you'll change your logo over time, right? You'll change your, your tagline or your strap line over time, right? You may change, you may change your mission or your, or, your, um, or your vision, or you may change these things over time, right? But you're not going to change your name unless you really have to. You don't. You don't want to do that, right? So you know there are instances where where you might have to, but you you're not going to choose to do that generally. 
Unless and you have so something that isn't work. working, right? If it's not yeah. working, it's yeah. not, it's confusing. So that's when you would need to change it. So I, I mm. we're almost out of time. So I want to make sure. Oh, um, yes. So, of course. so in that same um, frame of, I had this uh, example. So I know my friend, I will not use real names either, but I remember one of my friends, she was had her baby and she named it something. And I remember her mom saying not to her, but to me, I just don't really like that name. But I tell you now the kid's 16. She loves him, loves that name. Of course. It has nothing to do with money. It's about a relationship that she built with her grandson. And yeah. I think that that's also the same way. It's about the relationship that you build with your your customers with that name that's on it. You may not like that name, whatever it is, but it is it is just a word. So it needs to be short and simple and work. And if it mm -hmm. doesn't work, if it's too long or if it's confusing, then it's not working. And then that's when we need to go Andrew knows how to find, make sure that you can get all the handles and, and goes through naming processes. So like with wild routed, so there are two ways to say that word. So it's maybe important for John and Dee to make sure that they or wild rooted, right? Um, if they're just saying it verbally, they would need to follow that up with a wild R O U T E D, right? Um, maybe they would say it. Uh, yes and no. So, okay. So, like again, Nike, Nike, right? You know, once once you get to a certain level of uh, of recognition, people people know it. Know right? how to. The, the other one is that we are absolutely in the digital era. So Google's the very very obvious one. When you type something in, it says, "Did you mean?" Right. And tells you the thing that it's got loads of results for. Right. So unless there is the other one that is maybe spelt you know, similarly, but isn't the same, unless that exists and has loads and loads and loads of results, then, then, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll be found. Right. And, well, and Google's obvious, but all of, all of the platforms have got that sort of AI search stuff built in. And Martin even said, he's like swoosh.com actually goes back to Nike. So they yeah. bought it and just have it forwarded, which I think is a really good, um, yeah. a really of good, course. Jacob is good to see you, buddy. Okay. So what about, um, so we'll do these as sort of flash quick mm. questions. Um, when should a founder do this work? So when, when you get them as a brand strategist, have they already locked that down? Do you see that some people haven't bought the domain or are they, how far are they in the process? And when do you, when would it be ideal as I know, Anat is a brand strategist. There's other ones in here, D. Um, so when would you, so, so I mean, in, in getting the name, you start doing brand strategy, right? So, because because you because you need to tick off these things, right? You need to know who's who's the name for, and 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 so on and so forth. So, really, you want to do it as early as you possibly can, right? Because because then the brand strategy that you do beyond that, you're using the actual name that you're going to be doing, right? So, I mean, for me. Do it as early as you can. I do brand strategy as well, right? You know, from like like we were saying, from from really small people to to nations, right? So, um, the process at which you're coming up with a name should be it should be kind of one of the first things that that you do. Um, and more people get it wrong when they don't do it right at the beginning. So, like Pout, for example, had. The, the website was created and ready to go before they came to do the name, right? They knew the niche it was in and, and stuff. So they, but, but then you're not valuing the whole so much, whereas if you've got a name to give it, it personalizes the whole thing more and it probably becomes more of a brand that you will gel with as, as an owner, as a director, when when you're doing it. So as soon as possible. Okay. So how, why does so many people get this incorrect? Is it just that they're the founders come in knowing something and it is something that they just think because they don't know all the, the tools I, they need to do. I don't know. I, <laughs> I wish I did. I wish I knew, um, you know, why, yeah. Why, you know, why, why do people think that, 
you know, that 50,000 is a lot for, for a name, but don't think a million is a lot for, for billboards, right? I, I don't have an answer to that. Mm. I, I don't know. All right. Well, we got to get knows, this one. We got to get this yeah. one. Why is it easy to identify the simple solution? Uh, Jacob says su- shiny object syndrome. Yes. Yeah. I don't know why I had trouble saying that. Um, why is it identi- easy to identify the simple solution, but hard to execute the simple solution? Ah, right. Good question. So people very, very often mistake simple for easy. Mm. Right. So the simple thing is like like your phone, right? It's um it's simple, right? It's simple to use, of course it is, right? But but was it easy to to put together? Is it, you know, like could could you put one together? No, you can use it. That's so there's an interface, right? And and simple is one of the parts and 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 uh, easy is, is the other part, right? So it's simple to say uh, that you should get more exercise. It's maybe not easy to get more exercise, right? It's simple to say that somebody should leave an abusive relationship, but it's not easy for them to do. So they're not necessarily related, right? And, and people will jump through all kinds of um, psychological hoops in order to avoid doing the simple thing. But the but the simple thing is is the yeah, simple and easy are are different. And people confuse them and then and then beat themselves up because they haven't done the simple thing. So it's the stuff that gets in the way, which could be just time or they haven't done the work, they don't know what to do. And this is something mm. that you work with other brand strategists to do under their umbrella as well, right? This is Oh, absolutely, like- yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, it's it's this it's it's the simple interface, right? That's that's what you need to have. Yeah. So what do you, um, we kind of talked about that one before about what kind of excuses? What are the best excuses that you've seen or heard from founders or owners that it's because they that they want to use the name that they like? There's any variety, right? But but it kind of again it kind of, it goes through loads and loads of different things and. Um, And quite often it's a thing about, it's not so much that, maybe it's not so much that they will admit even that, that they, that secretly that they like this name and that's why they want this name, right? But they, they'll then dislike any other, any Uh. other name, right? And, and really what we're trying to do, it is, it's kind of, it is art as opposed to science, but what we are trying to do is, we're trying to apply like scientific principle to it, whereby we think that this is right, but then we need to actually what we Test need it. to do it. Yeah. And we need to try and prove that it's not right. Right. So actually, if you're going to end with something that works, you need to try and break it. Right. right. And if it doesn't break, then you know, it's fine. But, right. but if it breaks, then, then it's not fine, but people do feel this kind of like personal attachment to to their idea, and it's like it's really part of them. So getting them to to see the idea as being a separate entity to to them themselves is is key. So Martin asked a great question: How do you mm-hmm. find these people before they pick a rubbish name? Like at this phase, people think approaching a brand strategist is too soon. That's a really good question. And the only answer that I have to that is you don't always. Because if you did, there wouldn't be any rubbish names, mm. right? So, I mean, I know you haven't asked this, but I'm just going to say it anyway. So um, for me, if, if people listen to me talk, right, they none of this is rocket science, right? You can put it all together yourself, right? So if you if you get a name that is short, it's consistently available, it's unique, it's memorable, it's meaningful, and it's and it's your brand appropriate, you're done, you're fine, right? And 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 that's all that you need. It's not it's not rocket science and it's not brain surgery, right? So um once you've got that, it's good. So so for me, what I want generally is I just want people to stop having names, right? <laughs> rubbish names so um and 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 it's it's entirely within people's 
power to do that. So if I can reach somebody through whatever medium, I'm already happy, right? If they, if they pay me to, to help them do it, so much the better, right? But um, but that's that's kind of secondary to, yeah. Secondary well, and I think that more. that's, this is where um, education, so you as somebody who does naming, you have a whole, if you check out Andrew's um, Instagram, which I'll share the your hello co, um, it does, it definitely um, goes into, and you're educating people all the time about what goes into good names. And so I think, Martin, I think it is either adding something to what you're talking about, about when. So you're thinking about um, coming up with a name and then you add, you start talking about these things. And Andrew's done a great job on his Instagram. You can go back and see all the different names that he's kind of analyzed and and looked at some of those history. And I think that though for us as brand strategists or brand branding designers, it's really important for us to educate our clients. If you want to do work like this, or if you see this come up again and again with your clients, I think that this is, you just need to do more education or maybe you partner with Andrew and he does some posts for, you know, your, or he gives you some, or you do a podcast with him or you do something. So then he, you get that expert of coming in and saying you can do this, which leads to our, our last question, um, which is for you, unless you don't agree with the education thing, Andrew. I'm fine with everything. I'm fine with everything. <laughs> so how can people um, learn more or partner with you when this comes up? Um, you have a course, you have groups, you have your social media. Um, can you kind of give them uh, what's in, what those things entail? Yeah. So, I mean, I think I, mean, I, I try to operate kind of a, pretty much at, at two different places, right? So I try to operate like on an entry level Kind of, kind of space, um, and that is, um, if people really want to, they can get, they can just get the brand naming kit all by itself, and they can go and they can try and do it all by themselves. If they want kind of a bit of hand holding and me to talk, and I, I never sound much different to how I am just now, as as Diane knows, as John and Dee know, I'm I, probably a bit more sweary because Diane's mum's not in the room, right? But um but but apart from that, I'm this is this is kinda this is kinda how I am. So it's it's all short and it's all simple. Um and um yeah so so you can kinda either do it like a little bit with, with my involvement and kinda kinda helping you or you can just do it completely by yourself. Um it's kind of more the entry level side of things. And then the other level that I operate at is kind of at the at the much bigger level. That's kind of where you know where you get me as a consultant. Um, because generally in between, that's where that's where people know enough that they want to try and do it themselves. Um, they maybe they maybe don't value the external help because they don't quite know enough to then value that, right? So it's just part of a trajectory. And then at some point they say, actually, do you know what? I made a mess of that last time. I'll get somebody to, to help me. So the, the bit in the middle is the bit where, where it's probably not interesting to, to, to speak to me, but, um, but the bit, like the, the early bit and the, and, the, and the bigger bit, both of those are places where it's interesting for, for me to work. Um, and I don't have a specific model of how I do things. So like Diane mentioned, I've got like, you know, there are courses uh, you can sign up for, for a master's at, at, at the university where I teach. Um, you can you can sign up to an introduction to digital marketing course that, that Hello runs. Uh, you can get these kits. You can you can do it like that if you want. I've got I've got groups. I'm going to do a podcast. I'm going. I'm, I'm basically I'm infinitely approachable, and I always try different things because I'm just I'm inquisitive, and it's just how my head works. So, um, but I'm like really approachable and don't have a, a fixed way of doing anything. So, if people wanted to get the brand naming kit, um, I don't have that link. So, if you tell me, I can type it in. So ah, okay, yeah. So uh, the easiest way to get to it is uh, 
actually, do you know what? This is this is this is me just doing the amateur hour again, right? I don't even have it in front of me just now. I don't have a browser. Um, search for hello many many brand naming. Okay, we will. So if you search for that, you'll get the the free um, brand naming mini guide, uh, and you can sign up there for a newsletter. Brian got um, it. He got and, it for us. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. And then listed there are kind of the the three the three kind of package options that there are. But you know, like if it's if it's someone who's doing who's doing brand uh, strategy, then it's probably more a collaboration thing rather than than the end customer package that you're looking for, right? And in which case, speak to me or speak to Diane. Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, I want to just read it out for anybody who's listening. So uh, again, you can just M-I-N-I, the, uh, but it's uh, hello, H-E-L-L-E-A-U.com slash free hyphen branding hyphen name brand hyphen naming hyphen mini m-i-n-i hyphen guide and then that will get so um just to to as a great testimonial john and d had been searching had uh, thought about lots of things on their own sometimes we just aren't able just like our our own logos it's hard for us to do on our own because we're just too close to it so john said the guide uh, Andrew as the guide is wonderful. I mean, the brand naming guide, the kit, right, is wonderful. But his Andrew's personal guidance through the process is so valuable. If you just follow the guide, it's easy to trip over your own feet. Not that it's not easy to understand, but there's just a lot of things out there that do get in the way. Um, and then D says, go for the package that includes Andrew. Because Andrew yeah. is the one of the things that some of you guys know if you were at camp, but Andrew um, taught about over-delivering. And so he's all about that. And that's one of the reasons I just love Andrew because he does over-deliver. So you're always going to get more, but um, it's not a selling point for Andrew. He's given us a whole bunch of stuff today that is all he gave to us. And I appreciate because he is super giving and he does he does help a lot of people, but it, for me, he's helped um, people that I know, but also he's helped me as I've thought about things. I think when I was naming camp, um, he was like, that's really long. And so we, we made it shorter um, by doing, I had like, I think creative business ignite. And I was like, we'll just call it CBI. And in California, that's like the the FBI, you know, for California. And so maybe that was not so good. So I was like, okay, well just, we did creatives ignite and it, it was available on everything on Twitter, on Instagram, I could get the URL.com. And I think that that was, again, that's just him thankfully being willing to say, Hey, you know, I think what you have is too long and it would be better if you did it shorter because it needs to be um, re memorable and all the other scummy scummy thing. So mm. Andrew, and just so you guys know, you can go to, um, don't be, yes. Martin says, don't be rubbish, be scummy. That's right. So, um, That's it. I, I That's like that. That's the new tagline, Martin. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can catch, um, uh, Andrew at, uh, andrewburnett.com, but also at hello, H E L L E A U.com. And all the links will be below if you're watching on YouTube or you're listening on a podcast, whatever podcast that's in the description. And then you can also find him on Instagram at, um, hello, like, so Instagram.com slash hello, yeah. and then co H E L L E A U C O. Yeah. When I first started hello, I wasn't doing naming. Right. And um, I made an expensive mistake myself and I wasn't focused on naming. Um, I made an expensive mistake myself. I didn't register hello.com. Um, and that cost me, thankfully, only £400 to get hello.com aftermarket. Um, and not all of the not all of the socials were gone, but one of them was gone. So to make them all consistent, because again, it's consistency, they're hello, cool. Um, so they're all, they're all that everywhere else. That's awesome. That's good, good to know and good to remember. 
Um, I appreciate you guys being here. Andrew, I always appreciate you. Thank and you so I much. thank you for doing this with me. You taught a lot. And so uh, Pridge says, thank you. And she said, I like this niche. And I learned a lot. And she said, it has a little Scottish flag. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's good. It's always good when people know what the Scottish flag is. I'm kind of, you know, I'm touched. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. I will see you guys back next week. I think um, it is Ian um, and Ian was at camp and I'm really excited to have Ian. He's in California and he is um, amazing. And I can't wait for you guys to plug in and we'll see you uh, y'all haven't changed your time yet. Y'all change on the 28th, uh, Andrew, right? So yeah. everybody in Europe um, will still be at 6.30 p.m. Well, not everybody. You'll have to go. But GMT hasn't changed. But everybody in the States and Canada, I think we we all change. So um, hopefully you guys will be able to tune back in next week. And I will see you next week. And um, I can't wait. I can't wait to introduce you to my friend Ian. And we'll see you then. 